Okay, here's another David Space True story for you. I was about 12 or 13 years old, hanging out with my buddy Kent Annan. Kent was my man. I heard he became a missionary, which was kind of ironic because he sure was a little devil when we were kids. Anyway, Kent had a little sister named Jeannie. She was cute. She was just too young for me. And like most big brothers, Kent liked to mess with his little sister from time to time. Now, on this particular beautiful day, Jeannie was across the street at a friend's house playing in a pool. And Kent says to me, hey, Dave, let's sneak over there and scare them. It'll be funny. Now, yeah, I could have said no, but hey, who am I to break up sibling traditions? So we sneak across the street commando style. Then we had to quietly climb a chain link fence, which was about waist high. And then after that, we crawled up to the small hedge, which was just a few feet away from the pool where the girls were playing. Kent and I were just looking at each other smiling because we could already imagine how funny it was going to be when we jumped up from behind this hedge and scared the hell out of these girls. Just as we we're about to do it, we hear the sounds of multiple feet headed our way. Oh, if you could see the look on our faces as we both realized it was the sound of a dog rushing our way. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I almost peed in my pants, but the next thing you know, we hear this squeaky high-pitched bark, and we turn around and see the smallest miniature Doberman pitcher on the planet. I mean, this dog was so puny, a mouse could take his food from him. It took everything in our power not to laugh out loud at this gerbil-looking dog and blow our cover. So to make it be quiet, I put my hand over the dog's mouth and tossed him away. Kit and I looked back through the hedge to see if the girls noticed us, but they didn't. Here comes the dog again, barking. Now he's mad. I didn't even look at it. I just reached back and pushed it in the face. Just as we're about to make our move, the dog comes back barking again. So I push it in the face and send it flying again. Now the time is right. Kit and I are ready for the big finale. We're going to do it on three. One, two. Here comes that damn dog again. So I reach back without even looking and push him in the face again. But this time I, I didn't feel him move. As a matter of fact, I couldn't move him. He was solid as a rock. Now at this time, my brain couldn't process what my hand was feeling. As I started to feel around the dog's face, you know, still reaching back without looking at him. I noticed, I noticed his teeth. They, they felt a lot bigger than I remember. Matter of fact, they felt huge. All of a sudden, Kent took off running. As I turned around to see what was going on, I hear this deafening bark. It was more like a roar, and my face was wet because this puny little dog apparently went and got his friend, which was a 150 pound Rottweiler that was barking and snarling in my face as I sat there on all fours. Man, I jumped up as fast as I could and headed straight for the fence, running for my life. Helmet Jesus, helmet Tom Cruise. Now this beast was right behind me and I knew I wasn't gonna have enough time to climb the fence. So I literally ran into the fence so hard that my body flipped over to the other side. Whoo, Ken and I must have laughed for a full 10 minutes after that. Just happy to be alive. Good times, good times. <laughs>